Hello, welcome to the last day of our 10 day experience, live experience with John Logar, where we're talking about getting you four to five figure deals without the overwhelm, even if you didn't have an offer or a prospect list yet. And I say didn't because by now you should have everything. You should have an offer. You should know where to find your clients. You should know how to engage them, how to get them on a call, what to say on a call, how to close the deal, even the shark tank method of getting six to seven figure deals. If you haven't gotten any of that stuff yet, then you really want to go to consultingrocket.tv forward slash live <laughs> and hop on in right now because this is your last day to speak with John face to face about the one call close. I <laughs> see John is super excited here. <laughs> hey John, how are you? <laughs> hey everybody. I'm really good. I'm really good. I literally hopped off a plane right to, uh, I literally I've flown from LA. So it's only a few hours ago I landed and here I am. That's fantastic. And so here to, I am. Here you are. So from one continent to another and we're finishing on the big slam, a big win. So super yeah. excited to be here. Today is kind of one of my favorite to <laughs> topics, you know, closing in the one call. And, uh, and I want to say thank you to all those people who've been sharing. Uh, in the competition. Thank you for all those people for putting comments and posting comments on YouTube and LinkedIn and, and Facebook uh, on uh, this 10 day uh, series. It's been uh, really fun. I know it's been a little bit challenging with some of the times being all over the place, but that's due to the silly travel schedule that I have. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, we are here on day 10. Just to give you um, some perspective here on the idea of the one call close, um, we've gone through in this. John, I thank Please, you for asking. There you go. Yeah, if you've done all of those things um, uh, successfully, then you will uh, you will be you will either generate the sale, right, uh, with everything that we've talked about right now. But ultimately, you know, you're in a situation where you're trying to help people with your service. So selling is really about helping, and this part people really struggle with because nobody likes to be rejected. We all hate being rejected and we take it personally. If somebody says no to us or, or holds us up or we know it's a good deal, but for some reason they've decided that it isn't good for them or isn't right for them right now, uh, we die inside. We're afraid of having to answer uh, the questions that they're asking and more importantly, we're afraid. We're, 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 it's not so much we're afraid, we just don't like being rejected. We're human beings. We like to be liked we, and that's what we are. We wanna be liked, we don't wanna be rejected. Right. So one thing that um, uh, the idea that you really should be taking people to the next logical step. Right. Uh, you should never, ever leave a sale behind. You should never, ever leave a sales opportunity behind. And 70 percent of the people that I talk to out there, even in, in general business world in the, in the advertising, marketing, and the coaching world, they leave the sale behind. They allow they're, they're afraid to ask the person to commit. And here's the thing. It is you through a process that they have wanted to be part of. If you've followed the sales process that I've shared with you over these 10 days, you are guiding them through a and what to be part of. That's the key here. So we don't ever want to leave a sales opportunity ever behind. We never want to leave a sales opportunity behind, right? So one of the things that you want to be is uh, making sure that you walk people through the next logical step. I'm going to walk you through some closes. I'm going to walk you through a close that if you use this, it helps a client to close themselves. And I'm going to deal with objections. Those are the key things. And then I want to be able to answer your questions here live. So a great close is we talked about offering multiple options. We, we talked about offering a yes or a yes answer, not a yes or a no answer. So remember, when we started this whole process, we talked about we have an objective. We have the reason why this objective is very important. And the second, uh, the third thing is we have the reason why, what's stopping them and holding them up. And now they've agreed. Uh, we can put a plan in place. So these are the core things that we need to do. And remember, right back when we talked about solidifying the uh, sale, we also asked if there was a, uh, a decision maker involved in the process that they need to be there, right? Uh, we also uh, qualified them on the price. Uh, we also, so all these things, we've eliminated those objections. Even in the sales process, we eliminated why me, why this, why now? Right? Why this? Why me? Why now? We went and eliminated all those objections. And so essentially at the end of this, the only thing we have to do is to help them get started. Right? So 
and with you, so finds that you give into a close, right? Which of these programs do you, leave, you believe would serve you best? Option one, the basic program. Option two, the one that everybody buys, the business uh, ascension program, or the premium program, the whole enchilada, which is going to get you faster results, uh, way better outcomes. Of these programs, which of these believe, do you believe are the best choice for you moving forward? And then the client will say number two. So essentially what the client's done is put themselves into a buying situation by accepting number two as the option. Right, so literally go, okay, great, right? Another question you can ask, is it okay if I show you how we work together? Is it okay I sh if I show you how we work together? You can ask that question because it leads into a buy, right? Because from there, you're gonna go, great, this is what we're gonna do together. And so uh, the next question is, can we get this program started? Can we get your program started? Or can I show you how we get started? Can I show you how we get started? Or shall we start phase one? Shall we start phase one? Yeah, that's the other, other question we want to ask. Shall we start phase one? Like, because phase one is the setup. Phase one isn't, we're going to get leads tomorrow. Phase one is, we need to set some things up. So let's work together and get phase one going, right, uh, to get started in this process. So these are closes that you can literally, you, if you walk people through all the stuff we've talked about, at the end of this, you're asking people whether or not they'd like to go ahead. Right, based on everything you said, you like the idea, this is the objective, this is the resolve, this is why it's important, this is why it's holding you back. We've eliminated what's holding you back by providing our solution. We're making it easy for you to buy. I guess the only thing we need to do now is to get started, yes? So even in that, I would just walk you through a direct close. So based on everything we said, tick, 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 box, yes, yes, yes. So I guess the only thing we need to do now is to get started. Right. The only thing we need to do now is to get started on the program. Right. Uh, that's what you're looking to do in this process. Right. So the next thing we want to do is we want the uh, allowing the client to close themselves. Right. So instead of you closing the deal, they close themselves. They close themselves in the process. So this is how this works. Right. So you've gone through your sales pitch in that process and you've sat there and you've gone, great. This is the plan. You're good with the plan. Right, you're okay with the plan? Yep. Uh, the solution looks right for you? Yes, solution is great. Any questions about what we've shown so far? And they go, nope, it all looks really good. Great. So you ask, where do you think we should go to from here? Where do you think we should go to from here? Now they're going to go, uh, I don't know, you tell me. So, okay. Or oh, they might say, well, how much is this going to cost? Right. And they go, great. Is it okay for walk you through? The investment in this program and they'll go yes great so now you walk through the investment program and say based on the value proposition we only need to generate one or two clients or make one or two sales or one or two conversions or this will make it easy for you to drive a ton of traffic to your business right the type of traffic you're actually looking for to be able to resonate with your marketplace right um so uh so you know so your investment in this program is x amount of dollars uh, there's initial installment to get started for us to set this up the next is that we pay a monthly installment or you can pay for the whole thing up front so where do you think we should go to from here? You ask the question again. So are you okay with the plan? Are you okay with the, uh, the investment in the program? Any questions? We're good? Great. So where do you think you should go to from here? And they go, uh, so how do we work together? Right? So great. This is how we work together. We have an agreement. Let me walk you through that agreement. Here's what we're talking about here. Right? You bring the agreement up. Right? You say, right, well, this is your, what you're responsible for. This is the expectation that we're setting to make sure that you're getting exactly what you're looking for. This is what we're responsible for. Here's a list of our inclusions. I'm going to sign here. Uh, here. All you need to do is sign here. Right? Uh, are you good with our agreement? Are you okay with the agreement? Uh, does that look right for you? Any questions? No? Where do you think you should go to from here? And they'll go, well, I guess, uh, how do we pay for this thing? Or how can we get paid? Where, how can I pay you? How can we get this thing started now? Right? So you're generally going to ask this question four to five times. You're generally going to ask this question four to five times. Where do you think we should go to from here? Uh, I don't know. You tell me. Great. Well, let me walk you through the investment. Right? Or let me walk you through how we work together. Right? Great. Uh, does that sound good for you? That's good. Great. So where do you think we should go to from here? Right? Well, um, they might even roll themselves into, so uh, how do we get this thing started, right? So then literally you're allowing the person to literally step themselves into working with you. You're allowing them to, sell, to step themselves into working with you, yeah? So you wanna, like I said, you wanna ask this question four or five times, right? Next, 
dealing with the most common objections. The money, right? This is more expensive than I thought it would be, right? The I need to think about it. We need to think about it, right? Uh, I need to talk to my partner. Uh, I want to start this in a few months' time, right? So these are the four most common. There are other objections that people will have, but the most common objections that people have is the money, the I need to think about it, the I need to talk to my partner or I, the elusive partner, or I need to go to my managing director, which means you're talking to the wrong person, right? Or I want to start this in a few months' time. Can we start this in a few months' time? So remember at the very, very beginning of this process of sales, and if you haven't seen it, go back and watch the video where we set the appointment, right? The expectation of the appointment. We anchor the price. We say, this is what the investment is roughly going to be. Are you okay with that? And they've gone, yes, right? So in there, you could say, great, we talked about your investment being in this range. And here is your investment. You have three choices, right? Which of these choices suit you best? You've chosen the second choice because that's the one you want or believe will get you the value that you're looking for in terms of the objective and the outcome that you're generating, right? So ultimately, has anything changed, right, uh, from you wanting those things to happen and agreeing to those things? And in most cases, when you ask that question, they go, no, nothing's changed, right? So I guess the only thing we need to do now is to actually work out and how we can get started, right? So if it's a money thing, the money money close is another, there's another way to do the close, right? So it's a really cool way to actually get them to buy uh, uh, to overcome the whole money objection, right? So what you want to do is you want to go, okay, let's just get back to why we're here. We talked about this is your objective and outcome. This is the uh, why this is important to you and why this is the must now, right? This is... Uh, what's holding you up from achieving that outcome. And then the last thing is that um, uh, we were going to work together on this plan to hit that outcome, right? And so if everything we've said so far, is that okay with you? Has anything changed or is that exactly what we're doing here, working together, putting this plan together to get this thing rock, rock and rolling, right? And they'll go, yep, yep, yep. But they'll, they'll say something like, look, you know, uh, I've still got a bit of a budgetary consideration on the money right? So here's what you say, because this is where they buy. This is where they buy. This is in the 25 minute of this training, right? If you want to timestamp this and watch it again, right? This is where they buy. You can say, great, let's put the money, let's put the money aside for a second, right? Right? Let's put the program aside for a second. Is there anything other than the money that would stop you from implementing this plan today? Other than the money, is there anything else other than the money that would stop you from imp implementing this plan. And they'll say, no, it's uh, just the money. Great. Now, in that moment, they have just bought your solution. By saying there's everything else but the money, we would buy this today, right? So they've made a purchase. In their head, they're going, I want to do this, right? We just got to work out how we can pay for this thing, right? So here's how you bring the money back in. So... I know we normally ask for a you know ten thousand dollar initial instalment to get started. Um, instead of the ten thousand dollar initial or five thousand dollar instalment, what do you, what could you afford to just get this program started and we can put the balance on thirty days in thirty days, right? What so rather than me saying what about give me half, you might say what could you do to get this thing started, right? What could you do now to get this thing started, and then we can put the balance of the uh, initial instalment. Uh, and, and invoice you in 30 days, right? And they might turn and say, well, instead of $10,000, can we give you six or seven, right? Because if I had said, hey, what if we do half now and half in 30 days, and they turn around that could have paid me six or $7,000, I've just done it myself out of, out of one or $2,000 extra in revenue. So by asking them the question, right, they have now gone, well, you know, can we do it this way? Can we do half of the initial installment now? Or can we do 7,000 now and 3,000 in 30 days on uh, when we do the monthly payment, right? So then you can go, yeah, if, you, if that fits with you and it suits you, then you can do that, right, to get that started, right? Um, you might want to break the payments out over a longer period. You can actually give them more time. Like we talk about doing a 12-month program and we finance the program for our clients at 12 months. They don't finance it, we finance it. What I mean by financing is we're getting paid in advance every single month, but they're not, we're not asking for all the money up front, right? So you can say, look, why don't we split this up, make it easy for you so it's on your budget and work towards minimizing the impact of uh, the money. Can we do that, right? And they might go, you know what? That sounds good. Great, let's start that program, right? You can always, there's always a way they will find the money. If it's important to them, 
and they neither want to do it, that you've got to help them. You've got to work with them to find the money, right? The next thing is I need to talk to my partner. Now, if, if you're in a sales presentation, you've gone all the way through and the, all of a sudden an elusive partner comes up, you haven't done your job in the qualifying process right up front. Remember when we talked about setting up the sales process, setting up the pitch, we say, is there anybody that's involved in decision-making, strategic decision-making of the business? We want to make sure that they're there so that they can ask questions too, right? Because if you have to go away now, right? Um, it, it's really funny while I'm talking here, somebody just messaged me that they just closed a $48,000 deal. <laughs> In fact, one of, our pe one of the people who just started this program just put, closed a $48,000 deal. I just, a message popped up. So sorry, I wanted to interrupt there, but that was pretty cool. Um, uh, so so if, you, if you go back to uh, allow the customer to formulate or work with them on the money side, then they can pay. The partner thing, I'm talking about the partner thing. So going back to the partner, when you set this up with a person to say, hey, is there anybody else, right? And they say, yes, I've got a business partner, I've got a spouse, I've got a, a, a person, a, you know, a person in the team that we value that's part of this process and we want to bring those in, right? We, we have to find or uncover that person, right? If we're dealing with a chief marketing officer of a company, they can sign off on a certain budget. So one of the things we want to ask them is to say, what level of budget can you sign off on without having to go and talk to somebody else higher up, right? And they might say, well, you know, I can sign up on anything up to $50,000. So if, if, your, if your project is below 50,000, you know they can sign off on it, they don't need to go to somebody else. But if it's above 50,000, you know now that they have to go somebody else, then you have to invite that somebody else into the presentation because this person now has to go and convey all the strategies, all the ideas, all the things. And the person who is listening to this has no relationship with you. So there's no buy-in or no commitment to this plan that you've agreed upon, right? So I need to talk to my partner, the way to eliminate that. And this is probably the biggest killer of our sales and breakthroughs that they have to go and talk to a partner, right? Uh, we now make sure very clearly, does the partner need to be, we need to be very clear. If you have to make a financial decision, do you, do you involve your partner in this financial decision? Because I'm going to be very clear because I'm going to be asking you to commit to this. Right, uh, and 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 if you need, if those people, if that partner needs to ask questions, I want them to be on this presentation, so you can eliminate the whole partner thing. And then what you want to do, if the partner, and I'll talk about the, I need to think about it in just a moment. If you've got a partner on the on, together, they can ask all the questions. If they need to say, hey, we need to sit down and think about this or talk about this, and if you're on a call, you can say, great, look, let me meet myself. I want to take a bathroom break or I need to go and get a drink because my throat is parched. Um, uh, you you guys talk it out with each other whilst you're here. I'll just mute my, close my video camera off and I'll go and do this thing. And then I mute myself, close the video camera on, but their camera is still on. And I can see them talking to each other, you know, nodding and agreeing and, you know, I'll let them go for like three or four minutes and they'll go, hey guys, I'm back. So, and if I'm looking at them and they're agreeing with each other and I've given them that moment to be able to think about it or have that discussion, then I can go, great. So, um, can we get this started? Right. And they'll, they'll go, yes, we'll get this started. Right. Um, so, so if I need to talk to my partner, there's a big objection for a lot of people. Um, but I need to think about it. Um, uh, now, think about this objection, because if you follow the process that I've shared with you, we have eliminated the I need to think about an objection. Right. Because your objective, you said this is your most important goal. And you said this is why this is really important is a must now. And you said that this is what's holding you back. And we've come up with a plan to eliminate that problem. So my question is, what has changed? Uh, is that objective no longer important to you? No, it is very important to me. Is the resolve, the, the, you know, the solution, can you see how we can make that happen? Yes, I can see how that makes it happen. So my question to you is, the only thing we need to do is, where do you think we should go to from here? And then often they'll turn around and go, you know what? You're right. I don't even think about this. This is what I want, right? This is, I said what I wanted this. I said in my mind, you're just allowing them in their head to be able to make that conscious connection and decision to purchase your service, right? And then the, I want to start this in a few months time is a common one. Can we do this in a few months time? If anybody has, uh, is doing this to you, you should never have done the sales presentation. If somebody says to you, I want to start this in a few months time, you should never have been in the sales presentation at all because you've just wasted your time because in a few months time, you have to go back and do the whole process again, taking through a whole sales process, whole presentation, whole thing, because they will never start. And here's why. 
if we can start in a few months time, something's on, there's another project that's involved that might be getting in the way, right? However, the traffic lights, as a friend told me once, not all the traffic lights will ever, very rarely do the traffic lights ever uh, line up green all the way through. Very rarely does that ever happen. There's gonna be red lights and green lights. There's gonna be things that will stop you all the way through. So to sit there and say, let's do this in a few months time, you should never be in that sales conversation. Because at the beginning we said, how important is this? This is a must, this is a now thing or a later thing. If this is a later, th if there's a now thing and they've turned it into a later thing, what's changed, right? Remember we talked about, it, and you need to confirm this. Remember at the very beginning of our presentation, you're going back through what you said with them, what they agreed to, right? You said that this was important to you now because of these things. You're sick and tired of not getting the results. You're sick and tired of not having the growth that you're looking for. You actually want to focus on doing this and you want to actually get to those objectives so you can actually get those goals and get those aspirations and take that vacation or invest in your business or do the things that you said that you wanted to do, right? Has anything changed since we last spoken? Do Is this still important to you? They'll go, yes, great. So the only thing we need to do now is to what? You can say that, what do we need to do now? And they'll say, well, I guess we need to get started. Great. So these are the ways that you'll handle um, the one to close on every call. You wanna close on every call that you do a presentation for a sale. So if you're pitching for a deal, you wanna ask them to buy. If you're walking them through your strategy, your plan, you wanna ask them to buy. You never, ever, ever let them go. You never let them think about it. You never let them uh, let the money get in the way because they told you that this was a no brainer. Like if we could do that outcome and we can, and your investment is this and the outcome is this, then I guess the only thing we're gonna do is to get started, right? So I'm happy to answer questions here. Um, uh, your part, if you can jump on. Yes, and so there's a question from uh, Nunu and I hope yeah. I'm pronouncing it right. And uh, before we do that, Matt Bounds and Mike Hollows are watching us on Facebook and Nuno is on YouTube. So guys, hop on in so we can have like a face-to-face -face discussion, right? You know the link, Consulting Rocket Dan TV. You're watching us on Facebook. It's right above the uh, the video that you're watching. If you're watching us on YouTube, it's right in the comments. So hop on in. We can have a face-to-face -face conversation. And so Nuno is asking. I had a presentation today. At the end of the demo, after I showed the price to the cl uh, after I showed the price. The client told me they had two more meetings set up for the coming days. What should we answer uh, to that? Well, you should have asked that question of, uh, uh, you know, you can ask that question at the very beginning. Um, are you looking to size up your options here, right? Uh, you know, are you, you know, because at the end of the day, uh, why me, why this, why now? Remember that question, Nuno? Mm -hmm. Why me, why now, why this, why now? Now you're in a situation where you're going to have to, uh, they're going to take your price and compare it to somebody else's. And Ouch. here's the thing, if they like somebody else, Nunu, if they like the other person, they're gonna give them your price and say, can you beat this? If you can match this or beat this, we'll go with you, right? So that's what's gonna happen in this comparison thing. So one of the things, one of the things that you're gonna do, the way to set yourself apart so you don't fall into the trap of uh, a bidding deal is if you've followed my process, if you've done the presentation, shared uh, the ideals, focused on all the things that they wanted, got an agreement from them to say, this is it, this is why it's important, and then walk your plan to hit that outcome, that objective, I'll guarantee you that the competition will not d demonstrate or share in the way that you have in most cases. In most cases, they're probably going down the proposal path, right? So the only thing that you've got going for you is follow up relentlessly, uh, after the presentation today, Nunu, I would be sending a personal video to say, hey, I just want to cover the key points here that we talked about. This is what you said that you needed doing. This is what you said that was important to you. This is what you said that was holding you back in the process. Now, our plan here is to make sure that we overcome those, those uh, issues to make sure we hit those objectives. Our plan is to work with you long term to be a consistent provider that gives you predictable outcomes that you're looking for in your business. That's why you're choosing to work with us. That's the video you want to send uh, to them, right? To say thank you um, and uh, and and let them know that you're going to follow them up, right? Now, if you are in the meeting, if you're you know because you lose control here, Nunu, if you're in the meeting with the client, um, uh, there's not much you can do other than say, hey, uh, so when do you believe you'll have your other presentations together? Can we have a time, you know, on Thursday or Friday, nine o'clock in the morning or two o'clock in the afternoon, which suits you best? 
you have to turn it around and try and take control of the next meeting. You can't just leave it up to them and say, we'll get back to you. Because that, that's, that's like saying, let's start in a few months' time, right? That, that's, that's what happens there. So, Nudu, you're in a, a, an exceptional situation where you're in a bidding situation. Uh, if you've done your homework properly and if you uh, uh, shared your expertise and your knowledge and understanding of their business and also the ability to deliver a result uh, in a professional manner, uh, if you've presented a multi-solution because the more options you give them, then uh, most other people will probably only give them one option to choose from, not two or three. So if you've given them a choice, uh, that will help you stand out from the crowd. But your professionalism and the way that you engaged and you presented uh, is going to help you, right? So if they've got the no like, they like you, Nudu, Nudo or Nudu. Uh, 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 sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Then they'll buy. So he's saying, uh, yeah, I did not do the why me, why this, why now. No. But he will send the video. <laughs> so now, yes, yeah, send the video, Nudu, because because at the end of the day, it's another rapport building exercise with them. It's another way to build some rapport with them. Yeah. yeah. Um, the other question is from uh, and no, no, hop on from Facebook and hop on in, uh, not Facebook, YouTube. So um, uh, ta -ta -ta -tam, John Nair is asking uh, his biggest challenge is how to stand out from the crowd. Well, if you followed my process, John, you will stand out from the crowd because the crowd doesn't do what I'm suggesting that you do. The crowd doesn't deliver a, a direct presentation to the key objectives, uh, elicit the resolve as to why it's important now, uh, uh, look through the solution uh, to provide the workflow and to help them understand that you are the best uh, choice, uh, to walk them through case studies and outcomes in that process and then to ask them to actually make the decision to go ahead on the very thing that they've agreed to that they said was the most important thing that they'd like to go ahead with and you're going to make it easy for them to get started. That's how you do it. That's how you stand out. Nobody does this. By the way, most I, got, I really thank you for asking this question because most people who are in this game, their whole sales process is terrible because it's all about what they know and their and the how-tos and they get caught in the technical stuff and they get caught in all the stuff that is absolutely not useful or helpful to the client. You want to be very direct and very clear because if you're clear about what's important to them and you're only talking about what's important to them, then you're going to be the only person that is actually doing that. Because most people do the old way. Let's do a discovery. Let's put a proposal together. And then you can choose whether or not you're going to choose my price, right? So if you're following a process like I've just shared, you will stand out from the crowd. If you share the indoctrination sequence, you're going to stand out from the crowd because nobody does this. Nobody does this. Even, you know, we do it at Breakthrough. We do it, we, and some of my consulting champions, they actually do this, right? But very few people, right? Nick, one of the guys that I do, they, they do this. They do this indoctrination piece. Very few people do this. And the reason why they don't do it, one is they don't know about it, and two, they just can't be bothered. But here's the thing. You, you asked me the question, how do I stand out? I've just given you several ways in the last 10 days how to set yourself apart from every other person that is in this game trying to do, trying to win clients. And most people, I don't know why, they just won't do it. They just won't do it. But the people I work with close deals, like the guy who just messaged me, uh, John, uh, closed a $48,000 deal. Uh, in the middle of his presentation, 48 grand, and he only engaged the client last week. So, so imagine uh, less than a week ago, this client was a cold client. Amazing. Right? Yeah. Less than a week ago, this is a cold client. And today, he's just sitting there saying, I just got the deal. I just closed the deal and got the money. $48,000. And we are on the, what are we, the 19th, what, the, the 18th of December. You know, forty-eight thousand dollar deal being closed on the eighteenth of December, seven, eight days, seven days before Christmas. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, and there's still people closing deals. There's still people. We've got heaps of people closing deals. I've got, I've got uh, uh, people that I'm working with, people who are joining our programs who are in the middle of closing deals right now. Uh, nobody's putting them off until January. Uh, they're ready to get started now. So if you follow the process, then you are going to set yourself apart. So thank you very much for asking that question because uh, it is such an important thing. Uh, this whole exercise, this last 10 trainings that we've done is all about being professional, helping the client realize that you are the best choice and the best solution, helping the client understand that you understand them, that you're actually focusing on their outcomes, their objectives, their resolve, right? That you're working with them in partnership that you are somebody that's different. You are somebody that actually cares about the result, right? That's going to help people choose you over above anybody else. 
that's going to help people set you that's going to set you apart from anybody else in the marketplace because most people in this game are either trying to push too quickly uh, don't spend enough time asking enough questions uh, don't really know they're not really clear about what they're selling they don't really clear about their offer right uh, so they're not if they're not clear about the offer they're not clear about the result they're not clear about the result then they're going to convey that to the client that there's a level of, of, uh, of a disconnect between uh, capabilities right all of those things, I've eliminated all of those things so that you can set yourself apart, stand out from the crowd, close those deals that you say you want to close. So thank you for asking that question. That's how you stand people, to set yourself apart. So uh, the next question is from Vince, who's asking, this has been amazing. If I am just starting out, you shared so many resources. Which one should I focus for? Which one should I focus on first? The, setting up the presentation, setting up the nurturing, uh, sequence, getting the appointment. Go and talk to a business owner. Go and talk to a business owner. Talk to a business owner and ask them if they need help. Where do they need help? You want, you're just starting out, you need to get a client. The best thing I can suggest that you do is learn how a business works. So go and talk to friends and associates, people who are in business who have uh, brick and mortar business, not internet businesses, brick and mortar business. Internet people have no idea about business. They are absolutely <laughs> clueless when it comes to building business. Internet marketers do not talk to them. They do not know what a business is. What they know is build a product, sell a product, build a product, sell a product. They, they don't know how to build a real business, one that is sustainable. So real business means somebody who is running a service-based business or somebody who has a vocation or a specific, uh, a specific uh, experience uh, in running their business right uh, doctors lawyers tradespeople, contractors uh, uh, engineers retailers you know people who are out there in real businesses go and talk to what I would suggest always is go and talk to people take an interest in how they got into business what they like about this business what they don't like about this business what would they like to see in the coming 12 months for their for their business why is it important for them to achieve that milestone why isn't it happening right now for them what's holding them back right um, and what do they think that solution could be and then that person is going to turn around and say to you you're asking some really great questions what is it that you do and then then you can say hey my goal is to help you get that thing that you said you want to get and this is how we go about doing it so the very first thing that i would highly recommend you do if you're just starting out is go and talk to real business owners and ask them about their business ask them what works what doesn't work what they think should happen where things are going what's going on with their customers because the more you understand about how business work the easier it's going to be for you to get a client I've had people from scratch nowhere no experience nothing uh, to picking up a client within a week right all and only by using the strategy I've just shared just to take an interest in a business to say hey maybe there's something I can do to help you can I help you with a Facebook campaign can I help you run some leads on AdWords can I help you you know what do you want to do right so so that's the, that's the first step. The first step, go and talk to a business owner. My mentor, Jay Abraham, has a book called How to Get Everything You Want Out of Everything You've Got. It is one of the best business books ever written. You can download it for free at abraham.com uh, forward slash 50 shades. I think it's forward slash 50 shades, abraham.com forward slash 50 shades. Not you can 50. download that book for free. <laughs> Not 50, not 50. Uh, you can download the book for free, How to Get Everything You Want Out of Everything You Got by one of the masters of the universe when it comes to optimizing businesses, right? Uh, he's been a mentor. I've spent hours and hours and hours with him personally. He's been my coach uh, along the way. And he that book is the cornerstone. I actually encourage every single person I work with personally to read that book. But you can get it for free, How to Get Everything You Want Out of Everything You've Got right by jay abraham uh go to abraham.com forward slash 50 shades it is forward slash 50 shades uh and then you can go and get that book for free right but uh if you're asking me where to start that's where i'd start go and talk to business owners uh have that conversation and then you can start getting the list getting the offer out you know uh, you know getting the uh, those bits and pieces together but the place that i would start if i was starting out is just saying to people hey this is what i do this is what i help people with let your friends families associates know that what you're doing that's the first thing because you need to start speaking right about what you do yeah and you're going to learn that's going to change that's going to change along the way so you want to say to people this is what i'm about this is what i help these are the types of business i help these are the types of results i want to help businesses get do you know anybody that would like to see the strategy or the system or the process that we have that'll help you get that outcome that result or that objective Right? Fantastic. That is the first thing I would recommend that you do. And thank you for asking that question, by the way, because that's a very common question for a lot of people starting out. There's so much information here in all these trainings. But the best thing I can advise you to do is understand how brick and mortar businesses work, because in that you're going to find gold. You're going to find gold. 
you know. Yeah. So next uh, question. Your yeah. Part. Mike, and I also want to get uh, to those who are joining us today and don't know what all this is about and don't know why uh, Steve is so excited to be a part of this program. I want to get into that in a second. Uh, last question, two, two questions. So let's take this one, tell everybody what it is and answer the last one. Uh, this is from right. Mick Hose on Facebook. Actually, three questions, one more came in. So the last couple of strategy sessions I've had asked if we cover, uh, if we cover all of your questions, sort out your concerns and address everything you want, need to know, would you be prepared to give either a yes or a no at the end of our conversations? I just want to be clear, people uh, who need to think about things aren't right for this group. So I don't want to waste your time going through everything if we're going to want to think, if you, if you are going to want to think about it before making a decision. That's why we have the 30 day love it or leave it guarantee. They assured me that they would make a decision. Then when it came down to it, they wanted to think about it and wouldn't say no. Is there anything I can do to tighten this up and not waste their time and mine? Yes. Go back to why we're here in the first place. Right. Go back to why is this important? Why is this a must for you? Remember, we talked about your objective. We've got a 30 day love or leave it guarantee. That's that's uh, risk free to you. Right. Uh, you said this was important. You said this is why this is important to you. You said that this is what's stopping you. You're not getting this outcome. So now we're going to work towards delivering this outcome for you. So I guess the only thing we've got to do is what do you think we should do from here? Where do you think we should go to from here? Mm -hmm. Right. And they're going to go. Uh, I guess we've got to do it. Some people, it's okay. Some people genuinely have to think about it. And that's okay. You, you can understand that. But you can't let people off the hook without being really clear about the questions you're asking that I'm just been, I've just been sharing. You said you wanted this. You said this is why it was really important and why it was a now thing. You said that this is what's holding you up. We've got a plan that's going to work towards hitting your objective, the very thing that you said that you wanted. The investment pays for itself. You can demonstrate that it pays for itself. We've guaranteed our service for 30 days, so we're totally taking the risk away from you. So the only thing we have to do is to get started, right? That's what I would say. Now, if they genuinely need to think about it, so look, I understand, you've got to have, you've got to have a, a moment to chew this, chew this up. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, can I call you at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning or would 2 o'clock in the afternoon be best for you? I'm going to set this time on a calendar. I've got some time in my calendar at 9 or at 2 for 10 or 15 minutes. I'd love to be able to talk to you and uh, we can then get this thing started. So you can have a bit of a think about it overnight uh, and then we can get this thing started uh, uh, tomorrow, right? Uh, so 9 or 4 o'clock, which would suit you best? Yes or yes, right? Uh, can we make it 9 o'clock tomorrow? Awesome, thank you. Now, they get off the phone. What you want to do is quickly do a video a, a video and say, hey, I just want to quickly go through why we're doing this and why you said you want to do this. Right. This is the objective. This is why it's really important to you. Here's what's holding you up right now. Our plan, I know, is going to give you this outcome. We've placed in a guarantee to reverse the, to remove the risk on your part. And so we're trying to make it as easy for you as possible to get this thing going. So I'm really looking forward with our team to working with you to develop this project into a predictable uh, and consistent outcome for your business. The thing that you said that you want to achieve the most. So thanks for this time. I'm looking forward to seeing you at nine o'clock tomorrow or 4 p.m., whichever you choose. But you must get it in the calendar. And so you want to get that video off to somebody. So that's another way to deal with the, I need to think about it. Yeah. Awesome. And then if they ghost yeah. you, then you just drop them or something. Well, if they ghost you, if they if they ghost you, then you want to try another way to get a hold of them because I want to get an answer. I want to I want to say, hey, I know you're busy. I know that we talked about things that you were important to you and that you wanted. And for whatever reason, um, there are other priorities that are happening right now. And I appreciate that. But just please let me let me know either way. Yes or no. If you are interested in putting this plan in place. Let, please let me know, yes or no. It's okay to say no, and I'll thank you and move, move on, right? Yep. But I just want to know, is this something that's important and you're interested in doing this? Yes or no, not for us. Uh, we are not interested in, in uh, achieving that outcome and that objective. Please give me that answer. Yep. And then leave it, leave it at that. If, that, if, you get, if you get ghosted again, right, then all you want to do is just send them your successes, send them your case studies and your results. Uh, yeah. question from Brian Alloway on YouTube. Hey, Brian, uh, what do you say if when you ask the client what results they're looking for and the response is unrealistic? For example, they want to quadruple their business in 60 days. Great. So let's look at what quadrupling your business in 60 days is going to look like. 
Uh, and my question is, do you have the budget to be able to actually do that? And can you handle four times the amount of business you're doing now in 60 days? So can you deliver? So right now, how many clients have you got uh, that you uh, get to every month? How many sales are you making? Right, how many unit sales, right? Mm -hmm. So 4X is four times the amount of unit sales, right? So to hit that uh, outcome, how much are you spending right now to get the current outcome, right? right. And that might say I'm spending you know, five grand a month. Well, great, so you're gonna have to set a budget. If we're, uh, we're gonna have to look at some options here, but we're gonna have to set a budget um, of uh, four times the budget, right? Uh, because you want four times the result based on the cost of acquisition. So before we go and give you 4X on what you're doing right now in 60 days, my question to you is if you ever experienced a 4X moment in your business and are you willing to make the investment? If you're saying that's what you want and you're key, then I wanna help you get that, right? But you need to put the money in that's gonna help you get the outcome because nobody 4Xs their business on a minimal budget, right? right. That's like saying to me, uh, that's like saying to me, somebody saying to me, yeah, you know, when you get people like that, I, I just wanna, I, I wanna just, I, I wanna hold them to the feet to the fire. I want to get clear. So, okay, why 4X? Why 4X in 60 days? Why is that Why is that the objective of the outcome? Because you've never done that before. And so now you want to achieve that as an outcome. So I just want to know, what are you going to do with four times the money? Like why, if you want to set that as an objective, what is the reason for you to hit that outcome? What are you going to do with the 4X of the sales? Because that's 4X of your gross profit, right? What are you going to do with that money? And why is it important for you to have that money now or in that 60 days, why is it important if you have that money now, right? As opposed to not having it. So tell it. me what's important here, right? So what you're doing is you're, because you, you, it's not like, oh, that's, you know, if like, if I said there's a less unrealistic, well, great, because, you know, um, uh, uh, sorry, was it, uh, who was asking? It was uh, Brian, uh, Brian. Brian, so Brian, I've had people uh, say to me, uh, I want to add a million dollars worth of revenue in the next 30 days. That was their objective, right? And I said, great, we can do that, right? But if you give, but you've got to give me the budget and we've got to do multiple campaigns and we've got to pull all the stops to do this, right? Uh, uh, because to get that outcome, we're going to need a significant amount of cash to make that happen. And guess what? They had a significant amount of cash and we were able to generate a million dollars worth of revenue in that 30 day period, right? But that's because they gave us the money. Right, but they were serious. They they had a resolve. They had a reason. They we had a plan. We knew what had to happen. We knew what they knew what the uh, uh, the expectations on investment were. They followed through with everything that we said, right? And we actually surpassed that outcome. But that's because they they dedicated the budget to it, and they were, they had a clear reason as to why that was important, right? And yeah. they they had done it before. They had done it before. If they hadn't done it before. Then there would have been questions because my first question is, well, can you handle an extra million dollars of revenue over and above what you're doing right now, right? Right. Yeah, you know, because a million dollars in their head was not a lot of money, right? That might have been a lot of money in somebody else's head, but in their head, a million bucks was nothing because they were turning over tens of millions of dollars every month, right? So, so understand that when somebody asks you that question, then great, let's work on a plan for that. But you've also, before I go down the rabbit hole right why is this important why this number because let's what does that number represent to you 4x right so that number might represent so they need to voice that number in the head it's not for you brian to voice the number it's for them to voice the number so they're going to go from here to 4x in 60 days so that means 4x so and so what does that look like how much Three hundred thousand, a million dollars two million dollars right you know so yeah. you want to make two million dollars in 60 days so are you willing to invest two to three hundred thousand dollars or more to make that two million dollars in 60 days so you've got so you're saying this is what you want this is why you want it and to hit that outcome you're gonna to have to throw money at it because you've got a short time frame which means you have to blast the capital right. right to get into it and we're going to look at you know we're going to break down how many sales that is what's the sales cycle because we've got to work out maybe you need to hire you know to get four extra sales you might have to hire 10 people to manage the leads to get the four extra sales. You know, right. how, you know, how long is it gonna take you to hire the 10 people, right? To do that, right? Uh, you're not giving me any context as to what type of business this is, Brian, but if, let's say, but if a business was asking me these sorts of questions, I'd be saying, right, well, you know, do you have to hire people to handle those extra sales? Do you have to spend some money on, you know, what's it gonna to cost to actually deliver on those sales? Um, you know, have you put a budget aside to uh, invest in buying all those sales? Um, have you, you know, why, why now? Like, why is this important right now and not before? 
um, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, so you get a real commitment. Yeah, that's what you want to do. So and sometimes, Brian, you're going to you're, every now and again, you're going to get the exception to the rule because not everybody I've ever talked to. In fact, I've, that has only ever happened to me twice in my entire 30 year career where somebody's come in and, sit and, and asked for a ridiculous outcome. Right. Uh, um, um, uh, but um, most people don't do that. And with that, we're going to end our 10 days. Thank you.